Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to talk about a few takeaways of working in a big corporate. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because it's appraisal season now and I have been having catch up with people writing feedback for myself and for other people as well. So I thought it might be more recent and relevant if I do something like this. It is also just about a year that I joined my current team. So it can be a little work summary of my takeaways of working in corporate. The first thing I wanted to talk about is expectations. It is so, so, so important to set expectations right. Although you're in the same line of service and despite you're on a similar type of project, working with different people will result in different expectations. The scenario that could come up is that you might receive this feedback on one particular area. However, when you move to a different project with a different person, that development point might not apply anymore. This is the lesson I learned on one of the feedback that I have. I was working on the project on something and I was told not to speak to the other party before checking in with the manager. But on the other job that I was on, the manager actually expected me to. Huh? I was very naive thinking, oh, I should definitely take that feedback on board and carry that with me to my next job that I completely ignored. The base fact that I would be working with a different person on that project and with a different level of seniority as well. This is a very rookie experience in my personal view. And if I were going to give any advice on that, I would say check with whoever you're working with ahead of the project or at the kickoff meeting of the project understand from them on what you were expected to do it doesn't have to be itemized but you do need to have an idea of who will be carrying out the conversations who will be in liaising internally who will do this who will do that before the project starts this leads to my second point of developing your own style. I think the Asian corporate culture is to a large extent subject to seniority. So I came in with the more rounded, softer approach, trying to listen to everyone. However, I just kind of lost in which is the right direction I should go. Caveat, I think it really depends on the people you are working with. But in my impression, confidence has its very unique weight in this context. Being confident in your own approach is bigger than having the correct or the best approach. The next one is about asking for feedback. I have mentioned it in my previous video and I still think it's a very valid advice to execute in corporate. Having checking with your line manager or anyone else in the team that has worked closely with you will be very helpful for you to evaluating yourself and see you, if you have been performing as how you envisage yourself. I think with a very coaching and progression focused team, you should be able to get some sort of constructive feedback from some people in your team. You can ask feedback from your direct line manager. You can ask feedback from the people who are closely working with you on a daily basis. I would say it's also a different format of expectation management. Next one would be a bit controversial. If I were myself five years ago, I would actually see the full potential of my colleague becoming my friend. But my mindset on that has shifted a little bit recently. I think the door is still very much open, but I do feel like most of the people have a slightly different approach in the professional world from their interaction with friends. Well, as for me, I've always been consistent either way maybe in the corporate world there might be a bit of conflict of interest there might be a sense of competition it's dangerous to be transparent with people which i completely understand but i felt like with that door wide open it will easily put you in this slightly disadvantaged position you will risk being taken advantage of and as a self-production mechanism I would probably close that door a little bit. 
you can always and you would actually need to let your colleague know a bit more about your personal life however if i was trying to tell the full story five years ago i would probably just keep the story at the high level as of now last but not the least which i think is the most important advice for someone who is really progression driven yes it's great to have an eye for promotion however if you're not quite fit for the role yet you will not be able to shoulder that title i would say being patient is very important you need to be good at what you're doing now before progressing to the next stage there's a one interesting point about this men tend to negotiate for promotion when they're not quite ready for it they will say they think they're ready for it and and they will learn on the spot they would mind a steep learning curve at the beginning of that new promotion while as women on the other side they will think they would need to fully qualify for that role first before going for a promotion it's very interesting because it is to some extent similar to the advice that i've heard from different people and as a if i'm not qualified i would not go for it person myself i don't think title matters that much not because i'm compromising myself i think for your professional learning it is more important to focus on your own craft and if you are improving or challenging yourself on a daily basis and that's it i'm still very young in the professional work environment and the above advice and tips is what i think worked or would work or what i will work on from my personal experience if you agree or disagree or if you have any similar experience as me please let me know in the comment section below and i would see you next time soon bye